I would like us all to think about for a moment being a 15-year-old kid and having no opportunity to decide whether or not your parents are going to enter another country illegally. You have no way of filling out documentation for yourself and you have to come in order to meet your family because you've got no place else to go. We've put in to Powered Administration that is supporting this program. It's going to go forward whether we support it or not. No. Not necessarily, wait, whoa, give me a second. Not necessarily in our town, it'll just go somewhere else, okay? But, but, that money is already earmarked. Our issues are with Veterans Administration and things like that not getting the money that they need are with the Senate Appropriations Committee. And our issues with immigration are with the executive branch of our government. They are not with these people here. They are not anything that we are going to resolve tonight. Given that, we don't want this program. I'm aware. I'm aware. And you know, we have an opportunity that we could help people. And as Christians, I feel that it's our obligation to do it. And you told me three times, if y'all felt the community didn't want you, you were going to pack up and you were going to leave. I think tonight we pretty much said what we have to say. I'm finished. My time is over. I stand here today as the descendant of a slave. The 13th and 14th Amendment, including the 15th, was written for the descendants of slaves. It is being handed over to people who do not deserve it. They do not deserve to be here. St. Paul's College was built by freed slaves and also built by Republican whites as a legacy that we might have something that we could lift our community up. This is not only inhumane, but we are being put upon. This is wrong. These, citizens, these are the citizens of America. Our citizenship has been reduced to being worth nothing. And we need not and what scares us is what we're going to be exposed to and we go home to our children I have three kids at home all our members have kids we come home what are we exposed to even the buildings itself we don't know what we're going to run into when we go in into a burning building it might be a meth lab who knows but it's a whole lot of more foreign diseases out here overseas than it is here because we regulate it better. On the way over here, I've heard a lot of say doing the Christian thing. I had one of my members say they called an emergency meeting here at church. And they asked what the Christian thing is to do. I understand they're kids. But it's not the Christian way of accepting it. It's just the thoughts of what Christianity do y'all have on y'all shoulders when y'all go to bed for bringing it here. And who benefits? We all do. When my, some of my members of my congregation first heard about this Sunday, one of them said, well, what's going to happen? We're going to have a vacation Bible school here next week, and we're going to have all these children here. What do we do? I said, invite them with a the translator. This is what we're called to do. And I, you know, I hope you will not be upset with me, but I want to be honestly frank with you. I find that we have very little rancor when we get refugees from Europe, from Russia, and even from Asia. These children, um, well, they're young people, have come from Central America, and I've read some stories from Christian organizations and talked to some people and talked to a girl from Central America. They, some of them are gang members. And I mean, it, we, think our, we think our gangs come from California, but they came from Central America first to California, and then they spread. And these people are dangerous. Some of them have been in the middle of political war kinds of things, and uh, somebody will raid a village, kill the adults, uh, make the children either kill their parents or kill their friends so that they shoot a gun, and they'll be so traumatized, they'll do whatever they say. These children are raped, and, and part of the... Part of the um, payment for, for what they do is like, you know, they get to rape and, and kill and steal and take whatever they, I mean, they, they're just beyond um, ever being healed to their original state. 
they are. And so, you know, you need to be careful of your, your children and um, your property and your life and your everything. I mean, it, they, they're dangerous. First of all, these folks are not children. These are men, young men, between the ages of 14 and, say, 20, which was your definition. But I want to know how in the world do you determine if they are 16 or 26? That's number one. Number, and number two, what I have to say is, we have a perfectly good mothballed ex-prison next door. If we don't do something, we're going to end up with the North American Union before we know it. You said they're coming from horrendous conditions. Well, then the prison would be much better than what they're coming from. Uh, and can you please tell me why you chose a college that is unsecured versus a prison that is? Good evening. My name is Aaron Smith. I've lived in Lawrenceville for 28 years now. Um, the people here really don't want to ask you any questions. We really don't want to hear your selling points. We don't want to hear your politically correct terms. We talk slow around here. We got a little twang. <laughs> but we talk direct. Let me say this to you, as I look square in your eyes, we do not want you here. As you made your opening remarks, I believe you said, if we did not want you here, you would pack up and leave. Am I correct? I believe you said that. Well, then tomorrow, if the federal government holds to their word, there will be no more DHS police patrolling through our streets. They will not be occupying St. Paul's College if you hold to your word. We do not want you here. To all the elected officials here, Mayor, Sheriff Roberts, Ms. Woolridge, with all due respect, you all work for us. Thank you. We do not work for you. We pay you. Our dollars pay you. Our dollars pay each and every one of all of you, every single one of you. It is an atrocity how this community has been strong armed. And then you have the audacity to sit here and shove selling points and cute politically correct words down our throats. In 99, February 18th of 99, I took an oath into the United States Marine Corps to uphold and defend the Constitution of my United States of America yeah. from all enemies, foreign and domestic. I will die to keep that oath. We will not be strong-armed by federal agents. We will not be pushed over by your organizations. If elected officials here do not speak with our voice, we will find new ones. We are sick and absolutely tired of being pushed around. This is, I believe, from what I looked at by reports, this is the poorest community in the state of Virginia. We do things, you know, we do things different around here than you do in Richmond, in Northern Virginia. We like our slow way of life. We like our peace and quiet. So I ask that you please get out of Lawrenceville. 